Welcome to my channel. <clears throat> now, who are our ancestors? This is a question a lot of people are asking, have been asking. Those people like me, who's not a professional anthropologist, archaeologist, etc. And those who are professional. They've written books and papers, thousands and thousands of pages. And uh, I have picked out some data today that comes from the Russian A.P. Derevyanko, who has really, really gone into the details, uh, picked out a few things from his three global human migrations into Eurasia. Now, when he says into Eurasia, he's already kind of saying that they didn't originate from Asia or Eurasia. But we'll come back to that. In my last video on this subject about the find of uh, stone tools that were from 2.1 million years ago, found in uh, Xing, Xiangqin, Xiangqin, in the middle of China, in the area of the Central Lewis Plateau. I said <clears throat> that there are three possibilities. So it's a one, homegrown, two, from Africa, Homo erectus, who walked out of Africa about two million years ago, plus minus, or from the modern humans called Homo sapiens, which is a new species that came from Africa or came in Africa, appeared in Africa 200,000 years ago and is supposed to have replaced everybody. So, let's go back to what I found that Direvianco has been um, writing. I'm picking out a few things. And uh, this is, <clears throat> he says that hominids, ho now hominids are apes that are moving towards being human. They branched off from the chimpanzees 7.7 .7 million years ago, between 7.7 .7 and 6.3. So these are the uh, hominids, N-I-D-S. Later we are talking about hominin. These are the people who have developed so fast. These are the apes that have developed so far that they are bipedals, two legs, upright, walking straight. And then there's the Homo genus, the Homo, all these different varieties that we have. So we have to go back to 7.7 .7 million years ago. That's when they branched off from chimpanzee to the hominids that are going to go towards us humans. Then he says that some researcher, researchers do not exclude the possibility that Australopithecus, which is this hominid, 
represent only the early stage of hominin development. So we hear a lot about this Australopithecus. It means that Pithecus is that somebody doesn't speak. So that was about four million years ago, between four and three. <clears throat> then we have the next one, the transition between to bipedal in the case of early Australopithecus started approximately seven, six, seven million years ago and was not complete until three million years ago. So it took three, four million years for this Australopithecus to actually <laughs> become straight, walk on two legs and use that way of moving as the primary way of moving. So not, no more swinging <laughs> in the trees. So it was not, it was not fast, it was slowly, it, it, it took between from seven, six million to three million years. Then this one here, in all those millions of years, the different levels of development or evolution of this ape, hominid, to hominin, uh, it took time and the different levels intermixed, uh, had babies with, you know, not all the same level of evolution had babies with one another, they also had babies with the other levels and the branching off and so on. And uh, so that is called the high hybrid, hybridization. So here we have that <clears throat> says the uh, the possibility of high hybridization between the late Australopithecus and the first representatives of Homo genus, Habilis, and so on, uh, can't be excluded. Now, we, now we are at 2.5, we had 7, 4, 3, 2.5 million years ago. The chronological benchmark of 2.5 million years is extremely important for the history of humanity. And it is indisputable that the first tools are referred to this time. So it could have been Australopithecus or Homo genus who started using these tools. So we are now at 2.5. Then we have, we, people have talked about and agreed, this is all by consensus. It's not like the 100% truth. Uh, every day they find new things. And so the consensus is that homogenous, that is humans, come from apes through the Australopithecus, seven million to six million, then down to about three million. Then we can say the Australopithecus, he is walking straight <laughs> and he is only walking, not swinging in the trees anymore. 
And then we have homogeneous, maybe between 3 and 2.5 million years ago. And from homogeneous, we have the homo habilis, which means they were using, making tools and using them. Homo ergaster, homo erectus. And homo erectus is about 2 million plus minus. Homo ergaster and homo erectus lived at the same time. Ergaster was first, then erectus, but they had a common uh, living uh, half a million years at the same time. And then ergaster went bye-bye, and then we have erectus. And he's the one, he or she, <laughs> is the one who walked out of Africa to the Middle East, to A uh, Central Asia, and to East Asia, Indonesia, China. So that's what we have on what is the most plausible thing, the highly, li it's the highly likely, the high probability that this is how it all went. Now, uh, that was the high probability one. Then we have, in my opinion, the low probability one, but I'm not alone about that, that we modern people all over the world, we actually come from this new species, Homo sapiens sapiens, in, that appeared in Africa, East Africa, uh, 200,000 years ago and replace everybody. Now, that is not very likely. And uh, we have, I'll start with Dr. Chin Ji Wu, who is a most distinguished professor who lived from 1928 to 2021, and here he is, you can see, he is a doctor and all sorts of things uh, in anatomy, and he is looking at the anatomy of the modern humans in China, and he says that looking at human modern humans in China. You look at the cranium and it's different from the Homo sapiens sapiens in Africa. So he says Homo sapiens sapiens cannot be the ancestor of the modern humans in China because when you look at the cranium, the forehead, of the Chinese modern man is flat, but not with the African one. Also, the cheekbones, when you look from front and from top, are round in the Chinese modern man and not in African. And then the nose, the bridge, is lower on the Chinese than with the African. So that is the cranium. Then again, the teeth, the way the teeth sit in the mouth is different. And thirdly, and this is very interesting, this the the stone tools uh, in that the that the people in China has been using for since they started, maybe two, maybe more million years ago till when they developed into, you know, uh, higher levels. So for maybe two million years or one and a half million years, the stone tools, um, 
were the same kind of mode one. Whereas in Europe and other places where electors went, they went from mode one to two to three to four to five. So if Homo sapiens sapiens replaced all those older evolutions of Homo erectus in China, why would they not have introduced the highest level of stone tools? But they didn't. So all these things he says shows that the modern human in China, the ancestor is Homo erectus from 2 million years ago, <clears throat> plus minus, and they have been intermixing, have children with different evolutions and different, you know, maybe people from outside like the Heidelbergenses or the Neanderthals and so on came and they were mixing. So there's some hybridization also. And then he comes up together with with uh, two others with a hypothesis which is called the modern evolution of humans and that one says that since the homo erectus came to china they have evolved differently <clears throat> from other places because actually in other places they also individually evolved differently or due to different climate, uh, different environment like mountains or flat or swampy or and the possibility of growing uh, of having some food from the land or the animals that they were hunting for their food so climate could be cold medium cold or warm or and so on so different evolved differently evolved in different areas and that's why it's called the multi-regional evolution of human so they evolved differently in the region of china central asia middle east etc so that that multi-regional um, hypothesis is also what Derevienko is coming up with. Exactly the same. And he is very, very much into this because in his area, his institute of um, archaeology and uh, anthropology, ethnography, etc., is in the Altai, Novosibirsk, and they have in that area appeared a new species called the Denisovans, and they have studied this for years and years and years and years and completely got it like complete agreement with all sorts of scientists and so on that this is a new species and it evolved in that region from Homo erectus. So you see these two, China, Central Asia, Altai, Siberia, are in agreement with this. So the, it's very highly likely, probability very high, that the multi-regional evolution of humans with the ancestor 
of Homo erectus is actually what happened. And then we have actually handled the Homo, <laughs> Homo sapiens sapiens. And this whole, you know, hypothesis that Homo sapiens sapiens 200,000 years ago evolved or, yeah, probably evolved, came a new species and replaced everybody. I don't think so. <laughs> now, we have something very interesting. When we are talk when we are talking about homegrown, it's likely because you see this one here that I talked about is the 2.1 million years ancient human activity found in China. And that is where they were digging out or scratching out stone tools that are 2.1 million years old. Now, if Homo erectus actually came out of Africa, walked out of Africa, walked out of Africa, 2 million plus minus, some say 1.8, whatever. But we find stone tools in China, 2.1 million years old. Well, maybe, maybe this was not from Erectus. Now, Erectus, actually ancestor of Erectus is Australopithecus. But we have in China, an ape called Lufeng Piticus. Lufeng Piticus. That lived until 6 million years, 6.2 million years ago. And it says here could be the ancestor of African apes. And then it says that Lufenpiricus possessed the basic structural framework like Australopithecus, an early Homo. So it's a possibility that there were apes in Africa and apes in China and they evolved to become homo humans. I leave it to somebody else to find out more about this but you know what? In China they're digging and digging and digging and digging out so many riches from way, way back. And they might find where they were digging out 2.1 million, they might find something which is 2.5, 2.6 million, whatever. So to summarize, the most likely hypothesis or theory is that modern humans evolved differently in different regions, but their common ancestors is Homo erectus. The lower probability is that the Chinese modern man actually is homegrown and very little probability is that the modern uh, Chinese human being the ancestor is the Homo sapiens in Africa that only appeared 200,000 years ago. So with that, <laughs> for today, that's enough. 
If you liked it, please like, subscribe, comment. I am sure if you have seen this, you are one of those who actually are into all this. And you probably know much more than me and you can, you know, comment on it, give me references and so on. But all the things that I've said today, I'll put the references in below. You can look them up, you can read them yourself. And with that, I say, Bye-bye. <laughs>